This is the new Lexus NX, and it's a little bit like turning up to your own birthday party late. You see, Lexus was a pioneer with hybrid technology. However, they've waited until now and this car to introduce their first ever plug-in hybrid. Why have you waited so long, guys? Anyway, in this video, I'm going to talk you through the exterior and the interior design. I'm going to see how practical it is, try out some of its technology, and of course, take it for a drive. I'm even going to launch it to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour, because reasons. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start this video by talking about the design of the new NX. So it is familiar as an NX. It looks similar to the old car, though. It is all new. It's got a very distinctive and cool looking rear end. I love the look of the lights, especially when they're illuminated. You get this big full length light bar there. Really cool. What's not so cool? This, look, the fake ventory there and fake diffusery here. Overall, it looks good from the back. From the side, it's got that kind of like sloping roof line that you get with coupe. Not really coupe, but we claim it is because you can charge more for it. SUVs such as this. Lots of creases as well. I think it's a good looking car. Wheel sizes, be careful, right? So <laughs> they range from 18 inches to 20 inches. These are actually the 20 inches and they don't look that big. Imagine it on 18s, <laughs> be awful. This is the F Sport version. So it has slightly different trim on it, such as like smokes around through the windows, like a bit more sporty, there's smoke wheels like that. Moving around to the front here. So classic Lexus, you know, everyone goes on about Audi's big grill and BMW's weird grills. What about that? That's a huge grill. In fact, the grill on Lexuses remind me of the Predator. And you can't see that, can you? So the lights are really cool as well. You got that Lexus design, the daytime running light. You got full beam LEDs. For the first time ever on a Lexus, you've got adaptive headlamps. Yes, finally, they've caught up with the Germans on that, as well as plug-in hybrid technology. Overall, though, I do think that this Lexus NX just looks better than an Audi Q5. Definitely better looking than a BMW X3, and probably even better looking than a Volvo XC60 as well. Do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, the Lexus, it starts from £38,000 for the normal recharging hybrid. But if you're on the plug-in hybrid, it's more expensive. £49,000 is the starting price for that one. Now, if you want to make sure you're paying a fair price on your new Lexus NX or any car for that matter, you want to head to CarWow. Also, if you're thinking about selling your car to get a new car, you need to head to CarWow because you can now sell your car through us. All you have to do is go onto our site, which you can do dead easily by clicking on the link in the pop-out banner, follow the link in the description, or at a later date by simply Googling Help Me CarWow, then you can just go onto our site there like that and select sell your car, put in the details of your car, upload some photos, and you'll get offers back from our dealers on your car to make sure you're getting a really good price for it. So go check that out. Here on the inside, the Lexus NX has a very unique design. It definitely stands out compared to its German competitors. Quality is good. Yeah, so it's all soft and squidgy and expensive feeling. We've got some leathery loveliness here as well. But there is one thing I'm not so impressed with. Look, there's plenty of wobble in the center console. Hmm, it's a bit of a shame because everything else is really quite good. Now, the design of the interior is taken from a Japanese word called Tazuna, and it actually is a direct translation for using the reins on a horse to control it. But what they mean by that is that you're supposed to have your hands on the wheel, your eyes on the road, so it's very driver focused. Now, more on that later, because I'm going to show you something really cool with this car's heads up display. But yeah, this is a car that is packed full of tech to make your life as easy as possible. Apparently, you probably noticed this huge screen there. <laughs> so it's massive. Now you can get a smaller screen, which will do the same job and have pretty much the same functions. Though it doesn't have quite such a fast processor as this larger screen. And this processor is fast, so it's really good. You can just whip through the menus. And thank God, finally, Lexus have got rid of that silly, confusing, puzzle-like control system, which is like a mouse pad. And it's just a good old touch screen. So it's dead easy to use while you're driving. They've actually reduced the button count in this car from 78 buttons in the cabin for the old NX to 45 in this one which is sort of a good thing, but also a bit of a bad thing. For instance, now, if you want to control the fan, you have to use this slider here. It's not too hard to do, though your hand hasn't got anything to rest on while you're doing it. You can control the temperature with this dial, which is much easier. And it's a bit of a shame they didn't think of a way that you could actually toggle between the fan and the heater just by pressing it in. Now, one manufacturer does something similar, but with the heated seat. And if you want to find out what car that is, it's a competitor for this car. Click on the pop-out banner up there to watch my video review of that car. Anyway, let's move on to the digital driver's display, which is very nice. Also, you can actually change the look of the display depending on if you've got the S-Sport model because it has a bespoke sporty setting when you press this button down here to go into sports mode. Speaking of S-Sport models, they have like this slightly carbon fiber-like-ish design here on the door trims. 
not very like carbon fiber. Maybe it's more like brushed aluminium. It's not much like that either. You do get these lovely F Sport sports seats and Lexus seats are absolutely glorious. They are so, so comfortable. Really, really nice. The driving position is spot on as well. And you have an electrically operated steering wheel so you can make sure that even if you're long or short of arm, you'll be absolutely fine. It's a practical car as well. So you've got huge door bins. I don't know why I'm reaching over here because <laughs> the big bottle is already in the door bin. Loads of room there. I don't know why, because look, I've got a smaller bottle here for the cup holders there. And you've also got some more storage down there. You've got a old fashioned 12 volt charging port, two USBs there. You've got a decent sized glove box and it's lined with felt, so it feels expensive. So things won't rattle around. There's also some more storage into here. Oh, what, you can't see? Don't worry, it opens both ways. It's useful, isn't it? And there's a secret bit of storage down here where you can keep your stash of Haribo's. Like this as well, like so decent vanity mirror for the vein and a little place for your parking tickets, plus sunglasses holder there as well. It's all very well done and thought out. Oh, and I've got to show you these. Look at those floor mats. Apologies for them being dirty, but it's a dirty day today. They're like something out of a luxury car with part leather, part carpet. Oh, and this F Sport also has lovely aluminium pedals. Really nice. I like it in here. I like it quite a lot. Here in the back of the NX, there's plenty of room. So good knee room, good head space. There's plenty of foot space as well. And you can stretch out your feet underneath the seat in front. Also, the headrests are quite narrow, so you do still get a good view forward here from the back. There isn't too big a hump in the floor like you get in some other four by fours, which means that there's gonna be enough room for people's feet if you need to carry three in the back at once. Now, if there aren't three people there, you can use the armrest. It's a bit annoying that you don't have covered cup holders here, so you end up like in putting your wrist in there. What's even more annoying though, is that this car doesn't seem to have any through loading. And you can't split the seats three way either. That you can on one of this car's German competitors. If you want to see what that car is, click on the pop-out banner up there, or follow the link in the description below. Can't complain about the storage though here in the back, so big door bins nice seat back pockets. You've also got a 12 volt socket in there and two USB-C charging points. And this car has heated seats in the back as well. Okay, nice warm, nice warm bum. Important on a day like today. Bum, just want to say it again. Yeah, I'm actually eight years old. Just look 80. Hopefully they've cut this bit out of the video, but they might not have done. Now let's move on to the boot. So Lexus says that the electrically operated tailgate now opens faster than on the old NX. Apparently it only takes four seconds, but I'm gonna find out for myself. Here's my stopwatch, I'm gonna open it now. Come on, that's one second, that's two seconds, that's three seconds, that's four seconds. That's, that's six seconds, six. Anyway, the boot capacity itself is nice and large. 545 litres, which is comparable to a similar Audi Q5 or a BMW X3. It's a nice square shape as well, no real load lips, some scuff plates there so you don't scratch your boot when you're lifting things in and out. We've got a little bit of extra storageiness under there. Obviously, this is the plug-in hybrid, so we've got the cables in there, some storage nets, tie-down points, hookages, uh, yes, and 12-volt sockageiness. All the bits I like in a boot. There is one thing that's missing. I'd like release handles there, like you get on Volvo XC40. In fact, if you want to see my four in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner. Ban pop-out banner up there. You have to fold these ones down by reaching in. And now I've got bloody wet legs. Oh. Oh. God, first world problems. That brings me on to five annoying things about this car. While Lexus has finally done a decent and easy to use infotainment system, they drop the ball ever so slightly when it comes to phone connectivity. You see, while you have wireless Apple CarPlay, poor Android Auto users like me, second class citizens, we have to connect our phones via a wire and we can't connect using a new USB-C. You have to use the old USB connection there. I'm so disappointed. Look, I can't even fit it in the blooming arm. Come on, get in. Still, once you do it, it does connect really quick. Look at this. Boom. And it's a nice big display as well. Don't worry about that, pre-production hardware, not for resale. That's because this car is a test car for journalists. It's pre-production. You won't have that if you buy this car. But look, you can see where I stayed last night. Premier Inn. Everything's Premier apart from the price. So they're saying the advert. They should also add that the beds don't feel particularly Premier either. My back's still hurting. 
At first, I thought I'd really like Lexus's low cover solution because it's nice and thin, so it fits underneath the false floor because you can fold it like that. However, that does cause a bit of a problem. So even though it's light, it's a bit flimsy, so it can be a touch awkward to fit. Come on, there you can do it like that. Oh. But that's not the thing that annoys me about it. What annoys me is that it can bite you. So if you're lifting it up like that, see that join there, that hinge, you can get your finger or part of your body caught in that and then it pinches it, bites it, even just demonstrating it, it really, <laughs> that absolutely hurts. So at first I didn't think that this car low cover was gonna get yeeted, but it definitely is. It flies well. Lexus can't quite make its mind up what to do with its fuel filler caps. So on this plug-in hybrid, the cover for the electric charging port, you operate it just by pressing it to open it and to shut it. Obviously when you lock the car, that is locked. But for some reason, the fuel filler cap for where you put the petrol in, you actually have to press a button inside the cabin to unlock it. Why is that? Why can't it just work in the same way? <laughs> Did we have one man designing this one and a different one doing the cover for the charging port? I don't know. You can get this car with a rear view mirror which doubles as a display for a live camera feed from the back. Now the only problem is, is that the camera is located just on the inside of the rear glass. And what can happen is it can steam up the lens and you can't get to it to clean it. Now you can demist the rear window, but because you can't demist the actual lens of the camera, which is just behind that, sometimes it stays a bit foggy like that, which is, which is annoying, isn't it, really? I haven't thought that through very well. Do you like towing? You know, things like caravans, trailers, and horse boxes. Well, this Lexus NX might not be ideal for you unless you've got one of those tiny little lightweight horses the size of a dog, because the towing capacity of this car is just 1,500 kilograms. When you compare that to a Mercedes GLC diesel, which can tow 2,500 kilos. However, it's not all bad. Let's move on to five cool things about the new Lexus NX. Not only do the rear windows in this new NX go all the way down, I love the door opening mechanism. So it's an electrical release. You just press that and the door opens. And you might be thinking, well, what happens if there's a problem with the car, like it breaks or something? Well, firstly, it's a Lexus. It's never gonna break. Secondly, if it does, then you have a manual release in the same little lever. Look at that. In fact, if you're a Luddite, you could just open it that way if you wanted to. Higher specification versions of the new NX come with a heads-up display as standard, and as well as showing the usual information such as speed and directions from the sat-nav, it can also let you control various functions of the car. So you have two little touch buttons on the steering wheel which you can rotate around to choose various options. So you don't have to look down at the digital driver's display or the main infotainment screen to see what you're selecting. It's really very clever. You can get an amazing surround view camera system for this car. Look, it lets you see all the way around the car and you can do like a close-up as well. Look, so you can see all the way around it where the wheels are. So you know exactly how much space you've got. And when you start driving as well, check this out, right? You have guidelines and stuff like that, which is really useful. Plus, I'm gonna go backwards for a bit. There we go. Real, real crisp camera, super high detailed. And I'm gonna go forwards. You get a cutout of your car like that. So you can see exactly where you're placing it, which is great if you're going through bushes and you don't wanna scratch your bodywork. Although you're not really gonna be off-roading in this. More likely, you're gonna be using that system to avoid curbing your wheels on width restrictors in town. It's brilliant. Everything about this car is quiet so the electric windows may be fast but they don't make much noise at all do they then there is the windscreen wipers can hardly hear them can hardly hear them the motors in the electric seats quiet as well but the best bit is this because you've got those electrically operated door mechanisms you don't hear the central locking engage it's silent it just disables the the switches see silent Normally, the car would be going That's me doing an impression of a central locking system. I really love that you've got this big charging pad there, which will fit any size of phone. Well, not a folding phone if it's folded out. But if it's folded up like that, it will fit. And look, you can slide it away out of sight so it doesn't distract you when you're driving. 
Before I drive this new NX, let me talk you through the two different hybrids you can get. There's the normal self-charging hybrid. So that has a 2.5 litre naturally aspirated petrol engine mated to an electric motor, which drives the front wheels via a CVT automatic gearbox. However, there's another electric motor at the back, which drives the rear wheels. So you have four wheel drive. It's got a little lithium ion battery on board to work with the hybrid system. And that allows you to drive at slow speeds for short distances on electric power alone. Combined, the power output of the normal self-charging hybrid is 244 horsepower. However, this is the plug-in hybrid. It has a similar 2.5 litre naturally aspirated petrol engine mated to an electric motor driving the front wheels via a CVT automatic gearbox and another motor at the back so you get four wheel drive. However, you have an 18 kilowatt hour battery you can charge. As a result, you can drive the plug-in hybrid version at motorway speeds on electric power alone for distances of up to 47 miles though not if you're doing motorway speeds, probably. The combined output of the plug-in hybrid is 309 horsepower. Now you can charge the plug-in hybrid to a seven kilowatt wall box at home. However, it'll take you two and a half hours to do that, which really isn't very good when you consider that Mercedes latest plug-in hybrid systems use DC charging so they can charge way quicker. Anyway, let's drive this thing. Now let's see what this new NX is like to drive. I'm going to start off by driving it around an urban environment, which is perfect for a plug-in hybrid or a normal self-charging hybrid. So when you're going slowly, both cars will just trundle along on electric power alone. However, I can trundle much further with this plug-in hybrid. In fact, when I put it into EV mode, it'll just stay in electric power, even when I accelerate hard. In fact, when you accelerate hard in this plug-in hybrid, it actually gives good performance without the petrol motor cutting in. Now, another thing that's good about it are the brakes. So I'm coming to a standstill now. What you can find with plug-in hybrids or other hybrids and electric cars is that the brakes can feel a bit grabby. However, Toyota has been working on regenerative braking systems for so long now, they know how to do it properly, that there's no messing around. It's such a smooth, intuitive brake feel. It's good. I'm just gonna wait here for a bit. And this is another benefit of hybrids and plug-in hybrids, silence. And you're not gonna get the engine suddenly kicking in either to run the air conditioning system. It's fine, you can just sit here like you were in a normal electric car. We'll continue with the review in a bit once this traffic light has switched over and let us through. At least the seats are comfy. Oh, and the visibility is good. Big door mirrors, decent view at the front. View at the back end's a good day. Hmm. Anyway. We'll be going soon. Tell you what, England is full of temporary traffic lights. Well, this is quite an awkward turn. And this brings me on to the NX's turning circle. It's 12.4 metres, which isn't quite as tight as a BMW X3 or Audi Q5. I think you're fine, sir. What I can't complain about is the suspension. It's really good and comfy over bumps. It's a nice, soft, smooth ride. Only when you get a really abrupt, larger bump do you get a sudden shudder through the cabin. Now, I imagine it might be a bit better than suspension in the standard self-charging hybrid because it's not quite as heavy, so it will have slightly softer suspension. Fortunately, you can't get that car yet, but if you want a self-charging hybrid, which is pretty much the same underneath the skin as this Lexus. You can get its sister car, the Toyota RAV4. In fact, there's some great offers on that car through CarWire right now, and if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can check those out. I like the RAV4, that's why I like this. It's similar, this just looks better. Now let's try this NX out on some faster roads. So I'm still in EV only mode, look, it's great. And it's quiet, it's really relaxing, but I'm gonna eat through my batch if I do this. Also, if I suddenly need to overtake and build some speed, it will hold it in EV mode. Ah, you thought it was going to make the engine cut in, didn't you? Actually, it will do if you put it into hybrid mode and you need some more power. So I'm going to do it again. Here we go. There comes the petrol motor now. And it does make a little bit of a ah noise. And that's because this car has a CVT automatic gearbox. But it's not too intrusive. You only really notice that kind of groaning noise from it when you're accelerating hard, such as then like overtaking on the motorway or when pulling out onto a motorway at a junction. One of the great things about the Lexus NX is that you get active cruise control with lane keeping assist. So that'll just make it so easy for doing longer journeys in this thing. And it is a very quiet, comfy, relaxing car to travel in. I'm feeling very chilled right now. It's nice, it's a nice thing this. Now let's see what this new NX is like on a twisty road. So I'm gonna put it into sport setting and sports for the gearbox. Oh, it feels quite responsive. You notice the change in the pickup. 
the acceleration. As for the handling, it's good for a tall, heavy SUV thingy. It grips the road well enough and it doesn't lean too much in the bends that you feel like it's just gonna fall off the road. It's fine. And the steering might not have the precision or sportiness of a BMW X3, but it's accurate and it puts the car where you want it to be on the road. Now, one of the problems you have with plug-in hybrids is that the large batteries that they have over a normal self-charging hybrid adds weight. So this plug-in hybrid version of the NX is 200 kilos heavier than the standard self-charging hybrid. As a result, if you want an NX that's a bit more fleet of foot, a bit more sporty to drive, yeah, the self-charging hybrid is the way to go. Just feel a little bit more nimble and agile. When you're just cruising around, you probably won't notice it so much, but really, if you do like a bit of sporty driving and you still want an NX over something German, go for the normal hybrid. In fact, I'd always go for a normal hybrid over a plug-in hybrid. I'm not a big fan of plug-in hybrids. I think they're a compromise on all counts. They're not as Focus as a normal electric car, you don't have the same performance or response, and they're not quite as good as an internal combustion engine car for just normal driving because you're having to lug around a battery with you the whole time. The only real reason to have a plug-in hybrid is because it can save you money on company car tax because of the lower emissions, which aren't actually lower if you fail to charge it up all the time. Anyway, there is an advantage to this plug-in hybrid version over the normal self-charging hybrid. It's got a bit more power and it's a bit quicker. So, let's launch it. Okay, let's see how quick this NX plug-in hybrid is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. It's supposed to do it in 6.3 seconds. Specialist timing gear will reveal all. Let's do it. Oh, wheel spin, ho oh, ho! We're going slightly uphill, so it's not ideal, but what time are we going to get? 6.57 seconds with wheel spin while going uphill. Yes, it will do on a dry day, on the flat, 0 to 60 in 6.3 seconds without a shadow of a doubt. In fact, now it isn't uphill. Let's have another go. Oh, traction struggling again. What are we going to do? 5.98, 5.98, 5.98. I'm not going to say it again, 5.98. Impressive though, it's quick. Oops. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Lexus NX? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the NX. I mean, personally, I would go for the self-charging hybrid over the more expensive plug-in hybrid. But either way, it's a really nice, sort of eco-friendly family SUV. It's quite a cool design. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. If you didn't, don't like it whatever if you want to watch some more videos click on those windows there and if you'd like help selling your car make sure you get a fair price for it click on the box there to go to car wow silly car